Josh, welcome to the W2 Prison Break Show, man. So glad to have you on. Boom. Breaking free, brother. Let's do it. That's right. We're going to help some people today. Uh, we were we were chatting a little bit offline. I got a bunch of questions for you. Um, but tell me about your, you, you've done a bunch, right? You've had a lot of businesses. You've uh, started a bunch of podcasts. You have several podcasts going on. What was your first W2 job? Oh, first actual double W2 job. Uh, so my dad probably didn't claim me growing up. So I grew up on a construction site, slinging hammers and, you know, building, you know, digging footholds and footers and crap like that. Uh, first actual W2 where I was reported to the IRS. Oh man, great question. Maybe it was selling shoes in high school at the the place called the athlete's foot which sounds gross right yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, athlete's foot that was my first real job i think nice i almost jumped you there i don't even think that's around anymore i remember that story the athlete's foot and yeah. I, I think it's i'm pretty sure it's gone now yeah. okay what was your first all right so i'm not gonna we're not gonna go through your w2 history here but what was yeah. your first like what was what was the first business that you started hold on do you work for the irs brian i know that they just <laughs> hired like eighty-eight thousand people or something like that i definitely uh, do not <laughs> uh the first business i had like uh it was i was as a a kid in middle school uh and uh, I grew up in a time where in construction, the times were tough. And if I wanted ice cream and, and shoes, I had to go earn my own money. So I was just always selling stuff. So I would go to Winn-Dixie down the street and I'd buy Bubblicious bubble gum, and I would sell it for 25 cents a piece until the competition came. And then I had to go two for 25, right? But I would walk around, you know, 225 a pack, it, you know, I, I'd make. And uh, every, every day I'd walk home with, you know, three, 50, six bucks in my pocket. You know, so that was my first business. Nice, nice. <laughs> I remember. It doesn't did sound that. impressive, did it? Right? It wasn't like first thing I did was build, you know, a trillion homes or something. No, nope. selling bubble gum, <laughs> selling bubble gum, making making money though, figuring yeah. out a way to make money. Sure. I did that at like we had like a local farm store because I'm from I, I grew up in Florida too, and uh, which I remember when Dixie as well, but. The, the, I would used to go in and buy candy, like by the truckload. And the guy finally said one day, he's like, Hey, I'm not selling this to you anymore. I'm like, what do you care? You know? Cause he knew what I was doing. So I, my, my supplier cut me off. Yeah. Yeah. Had to go to the source, man. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Um, all right. So, okay. What was your, come on. What was your first like biz, yeah. like your entrepreneur deal? Like you're, you're in it, right? Sure. Yeah. So I hated working for dad, He's mm -hmm. best buddies and such, but he was just very difficult to work with. And I wanted to uh, break free. And my, my thinking was this, my dad was good at building stuff, really good at construction, but I, uh, you know, sitting up on a roof in, in, in Florida, you know, doing roofing and such. And I saw this lady drive up in this big Escalade, throw a sign in the front yard, drive off and was like, peace. And I was like, what is she doing? and she, we were building it she was selling it and she was driving a much better vehicle than me so the first real business i got into is i i became a real estate agent and my thought was my dad could build it i could sell it mm -hmm. and then i started putting together like i read the book rich dad not uh, yeah rich dad poor dad but then robert allen how to buy houses no money down i saw uh, oh carlton sheets i'm sorry carlton sheets i bought the the binder thing so mm -hmm. The first business, right? I was doing real estate as a profession. The first business is I started wholesaling kind of on the side. So that was kind of the first business. And then, you know, got me into real estate. Yeah. You're still doing real estate today, right? I, I am freaking 20 something years later. I try to run from it many times, but here I am again. Amazing. Are you like, what level of involvement are you in your real estate business. I talk about that a little bit because a lot of people get yeah. stuck working in their business as a W-2 employee. Oh man, great question. I do not like uh, dealing with tenants. I do not like dealing with toilets. I do not like dealing with, you know, those kind of phone calls. I've got three kids, uh, 10, five, and three. And when I go home from work, I like it kind of to work to stay there. Sometimes it follows me home, but uh, mm -hmm. so I like working in, you know, commercial, uh, I like syndicating deals where I just kind of put deals together through podcasting, through my PR company, and then get the heck out of the way. Um, so my involvement mostly is connections, strategic relationships, referrals, uh, advisory, and then Josh needs to get out of there or he's mm -hmm. going to mess up the deal. Got it. Because you, you you know what your strengths are. You You know your lane and you just talked about something that's super important, which is purpose. So yeah. 
talk about what that means, what that word means for you, Josh. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I got this tattooed on my arm. It says, who am I? And I remember a, a time where uh, one of my first real W2 jobs, right? Like I've had so many different jobs um, in my life, many career changes, many different pivots, trying to find out like, what's my fit? Like, where am I supposed to work? What am I supposed to do with my life and such? Because I think that's in the heart of a man is to like find the joy in his work. And I just couldn't find it anywhere. And I've, I've done many different things. And uh, I, I found myself, I was working W2 wise for the government as a firefighter medic. <laughs> and um, I was working full time as a firefighter medic. I was on the pension board, like looking at the numbers, which were scary. And then I ran a landscaping company and I taught defensive tactics at night at the college and I taught paramedics. So I was working my ass off. Yeah. And then I just, I just was working, 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 working. And this, uh, uh, these ideas came up for uh, a business that I should build. Right. So Josh went off, retired early, cashed out my pension, took the pension, applied it to the business and it failed big time. So I, I, I say, I set that up because I had the most stable job you can get you know, working for the government and such like that. And I went all in for entrepreneurship. So W2 to a founder of a tech company, and I knew nothing about tech. When that failed and I lost all my pension and I couldn't get a job and I couldn't make ends meet, I found myself standing on a bridge thinking of jumping because I felt worthless because I couldn't produce. Here I was, I have, a, I have degrees. I have a lot of degrees. I have a lot of schooling. I have a lot of uh, certificates and paramedic and this and that. And I, you know, went to school for all these things and I couldn't produce and I couldn't pay for uh, baby formula for our new baby. So purpose comes up a lot to me because I was like, what the F am I doing with my life? And it, that, that kind of started my journey on trying to find out like my fit in this world. What is my, what's my place in this world? What am I, what am I here for? I started asking the questions because I, I wanted to kill myself because I felt worthless. So through a lot of struggles and coaching and work and reading books and, you know, a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of figured out who I was, my strengths and my purpose on this earth. So like now it brings me great joy independent of what the bank account shows. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Was not expecting to hear that. I appreciate <laughs> your vulnerability. No, this is good. People need to hear this stuff, Josh. They yeah. really do. Thanks, man. Yeah, you know, that not everybody just has this meteoric rise to success, right? Like there's real pain and struggle in the world and people go through stuff, right? And it's important to share that message because someone listening, maybe they're listening, maybe you could relate to that. So that's why we do what we do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this uh, these kind of conversations, what I love about this and the, the questions that you're asking mm -hmm. is there's someone out there in the audience who's going, they're going through it right this minute. And they're thinking of that, you know, swan diving off, or they're thinking about, you know, retiring from the military or, you know, leaving the corporate job and cutting the handcuffs. And they're, and, you know, like the gurus on TV could say like, yeah, it's, you know, peaches and cream, you know, and everything's awesome. But I think, you know, I think, I think it's a good idea to, to understand the full, the full journey of what it could be. And is it worth it? Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, we talk a lot about, and I, I'm a guilty of it too. And you, know, you go on social media, I mean, the, the whole world's amazing and wonderful and everybody's <laughs> super happy, right? Sure. And, which is which is bad. I think it's bad to do that. But these, like you said, these con these type of conversations are are healthy. I mean, I I went to my wife this morning and, you know, I'm a business owner. I've, I've been out of my job for three years. And I said, man, I'm just not, I'm just not feeling it this week. You know, like I got this, this, this going on. I kind of was having like the pity party moment and, you know, it felt better after I told her that. Cause I'd been kind of, I mean, I know, you know, this, but as men, we tend to like shove it all down. Right. Yeah. We don't share it. We don't tell it. There's yeah. something about that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. We feel like we got to hide stuff and everything's got to be perfect all the time. So, I mean, I don't know if you have any insight, yeah, insight well, there. We we shove it down because that growing up as kids, we're like, Hey, rub some dirt on it, toughen up, push through, you know, like in our mind, we go, here's what a, a woman wants in a man. They want strong fortitude, whatever. And what I found is I was trying to do that too. And my dad was Vietnam vet, badass dude. And you know, I was a wrestler and fighter. And I, at one point I wrestled alligators professionally. So I was a tough dude. And you know, like I didn't want to share some of the concerns or the fears I had with my wife. Because I didn't want her to lose faith in me. I didn't want her to be like, oh, I'm married to a, a wuss. 
right? So like, so I shove those things down and then I pour booze on top of it or I smoke it over or like I hide it with, you know, I eat too much or I overwork and I'm, my identity is so wrapped up in what people think of me and my job title or whatever. Yeah. So I never talked about it. And then I started going to coaching and therapy and counseling and all this stuff. And I started talking to my wife about it. And what I found is she started re really relating with me and we started becoming more intimate together. I thought I start sharing like my feelings with her and then she'd be like, peace out. I'm gone. I want to marry, you know, this guy over here who's, who's badass and tough. That's not what she wanted. She wanted to know me. So huge paradigm shift for you fellas out there listening in, uh, you know, uh, you know, there's times where she goes, suck it up, buttercup. You know, like you chose this world. You chose entrepreneurship, Josh. I'm like, I don't know if I chose it or it chose me, but whatever I'm in, I choose right. it every day. But sometimes she goes, suck it up, buttercup. And, and that's, uh, that's healthy for me too. But uh, yeah, I agree with you, man. Like we, we shove it down and we need places to let it go because if not, we're going to wind up blowing up at our kids. We're going to drink too much, eat too much, whatever. And we're going to try to find the peace in, you know, in between our ears. It's hard to find if you're shoving it down. Yeah. Well, what a great share. So awesome. I couldn't agree more because I did that my whole life. And my dad, we're aligned in a lot of ways. My I watched my dad, you know, never show emotion ever. And then his dad was even worse. And, you know, again, no, nothing wrong with them. That's their download. That's the way that they were. That's what they saw. Yeah. We have a duty to be better. You know, I wanted to be better for, for my son. So I'm like, I'm not going to do this anymore. We're going to talk about it. And yeah, same thing happened to me. I, when I started to open up to my wife, the intimacy was was great. And I'm in, and and we know what we're talking about with intimacy. It's just the relationship that you have yeah. with with her. And it's been nothing short of tremendous. So I I I hope that everyone listening really truly hears that and understands that like we think we know what women want, but that's really what they want. <laughs> yeah, I think so, man. I think so. I'm 41 years old and I'm learning this stuff, you know, and I'm thankful. Cause I see some old dudes out there, you know, I've interviewed over a thousand people and I've seen, you know, people who I'm doing air quotes for you guys listening in. I don't know if they're going to watch this on YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, how you produce it, but uh, air quotes, you know, success. And I've interviewed a lot of lonely people, money in the bank, you know, cars in the thing, but nobody's sitting in the passenger seat. Is that success? I don't think so. Like not for me. I'd rather yeah. a beater with a, you know, hot mom and sit next to me. My wife's hot, you know, like that's what I want, you know? So nice. that's, that's how I feel about it, man. But, um, we got to see what, you know, how we measure our, our own successes. Right. Totally. And yes, they will see your air quotes on YouTube. Um, okay, cool. we do, we do broadcast it on YouTube, but I should have so, wore pants then. I'm sorry. I mean, next time, <laughs> I'll, next time I'll warn you folks, cover your eyes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the actual successful people admit that you've have admitted that to you. Like, Hey, I got all this money, but I'm not happy. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the thing with the podcasting world or YouTube world. I built, you know, maybe 10 or so podcast shows produced maybe close to 1500 episodes over the years doing this. I sold a podcast show once and just, uh, Here's, here's what happens sometimes. I've interviewed a lot of another air quote gurus out there and you know, we're jamming and we're having a great time. And I'm like, man, this guy's impressive, right? Like I'm, I'm ready to buy their program, mm -hmm. hit stop recording. And then they start asking me for money and they're like, Hey man, I'm really struggling. Can you connect me with so, so I was just like, wait a second. You were, I just thought, I thought you were a baller and now you're like asking me for help. And so like, I, I don't get it. And then I just saw like a lot of smoke and mirrors in the industry because like we're trained in social media to show you just the good stuff. Mm. And when times are tough, you know, like they're, they're thinking, how can I sell my coaching program if I'm struggling financially? Some of the best deals I've ever done was when I was struggling financially. And I told the person, I'm like, Hey, I'm willing to give you this great deal because I need to make money because my kid needs to eat, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, wow. That's interesting. And I, I promise you, I'm not going to ask you for money when we hit stop record. <laughs> I'll give it to you, man. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> awesome. All right. So what, what just resonated with me? I mean, that was a great share, but 10 to 12 podcasts. Okay. A lot of people out there, I think have ideas for podcasts. All right. So yeah. why 10 to 12? And then I'm dying to hear how you sold your, your podcast. Cause I don't think most people understand that this is, this is a commodity. This is a business, right? Or it can sure. be if you treat it as such. 
Sure. Yeah. I tried hundreds of different sub, uh, business models. I built a show that went iTunes chop, top of charts and you know, my, my picture was next to some famous people and my friends were like sending me like screenshots and I was like, Oh, that's awesome. And I went broke doing that. But I, you know, like I, I, I tried many different things out trying to find my fit in this world. Like I said, I have it tattooed on my arm. Who am I in the journey of trying to find out who I am, man, I tried so many different things. The first one I built was I built a fitness technology company. My thought was I could interview my clients, talk to them about like, how did you lose 50 pounds this, you know, this quarter? And how did you do this? And, and they became my sales tools, right? Um, and they would tell me what they like about the program and what they didn't like. It was called the village push. I think it's still out there somewhere like the, the podcast, right? Yeah. But, uh, the, so that was the first one. And then when that business failed, I, I started another one and then another, and then I did a, a, you know, strategic partnership and I stood up and I started doing it for other people and, and with other people and just kind of get people going. And what I found is I have a gift in terms of like, I have a crazy ass idea and I could launch something in a day or two, right? Like I'm, I could just run, you know, and I could, I could start stuff. And a lot of people, they're afraid to start. So I started one. I, I had a corporate sponsor. I started it, did a, the intro, did the artwork, uh, did the first episode, and then handed it off to an investor and he ran with it. Wow. Right? So I didn't, like, I didn't get a few money and I, I'm not, you know, living on a sailboat because of it, but it validated the idea that I could, that this is something valuable. The idea of being able to do this is valuable. Yeah. That's so good. That's, a, and the lesson there is like, you've done 10 to 12. 10, 12 yeah. shows. It's like, we got to try it more than once. Totally. You right. Find your fit. Yep. Okay. So you've mentioned the tattoo a yeah. couple of times. Who am I? Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you, who are you? Yeah. So first of all, I'm a child of God, man. Like I believe everything, you know, bases in, into our belief systems, our belief systems help create our, our values. What, what do we find valuable in this world? And then we create principles that drive the values. And then we, our actions line up with our principles and that's the fruit we develop in our world. So who am I? It's got to start with my belief system. And I believe that my God is my heavenly father. Uh, you know, like I, I feel like a, my purpose here is to you know honor him and have a relationship with him and then you know through that who am i if you look into tactically josh who are you i'm mm -hmm. a uh, i'm a husband i'm a father i'm a really good dude like i try to be and i i help other guys like that's that's the core of what i love doing and i do some real estate and podcasting on the side right i love how that was the last thing you said yeah. So, you yeah. know, you've got, you know, your family's up there. Your faith is, your faith is first and for, for, foremost, your family, yeah. you're helping, you're serving other people. And then, yeah, I, hey, I do this other thing on the side. Yeah. Real estate. I mean, to be honest, Mike, the, it sticks and bricks, you know, like real estate's been around for, you know, since cavemen were, were, you know, were fighting over a piece of land or whatever. So it's like nothing really new and it's not very exciting, you know, like closing big deals are awesome it's just a vehicle that I get to do what I'm made to do. I love yeah. helping people. I love working with, you know, visionaries and entrepreneurs and investors. And mm -hmm. that's why I only work with investors, visionaries, entrepreneurs. Like I don't do residential real estate for the reason is I don't care what color the house is. Will it make money? Right? Like that's, I like, I like investors because of that reason. Yeah. Yeah. You're very clear on what, on what you want to do. And, and, um, you know, I just keep going back to that moment where you talked about where you were on the, you were thinking about jumping, you know, yeah. and now, now here you are. So good on you, proud of you, man. And, and, um, I, I love what you stand for. What is it you're, I, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you about your family a little bit too, because yeah. you're, you're, you're a dad and I, you know, a lot of the stuff that you, that you put out there is about your family, which is totally. great. And I mean, what is your, what does your family mean to you? Oh my God. Uh, so as a dude, I found myself running and gunning in the name of family, like with good intent, working four in the morning, 12 o'clock at night, hustling, doing multiple jobs and such like that for the family, right? To produce, to provide and such like that. Um, but really I was doing it to try to prove a point. I was trying to prove myself to the world. I was trying to prove myself to my dad or, or to even myself. When I realized 
a lot of this, uh, I really looked at my family and I go, wow, I just moved my family cross country. My daughter's one of my daughters, 10 years old, and she's lived in like nine different homes. And, you know, like I was chasing, 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 chasing. And really what I should have been chasing was my identity and purpose, right? And God, right? My belief systems, but my family chasing my, my bride, I've, you know, like luckily I landed a, a, a woman who loves me, who loves God, who loves our family. Like I should be chasing her. I should be chasing my daughters. I should be chasing my son in the backyard with, you know, ninja sticks and having fun with him. Right. Like, but I was chasing money or, you know, meaning, or like, you know, you, you start to get followers, you know, like I, another air quote followers on LinkedIn or, you know, YouTube subscribers or whatever. And then you start chasing more of that validation man, I should be chasing my family, dude, because they're, they're the ones that are going to wipe my butt when I'm 90 years old or whatever. Like, you know, like that's, that's my first gift and my mission. Like uh, that's my priorities were way off. So what are they to me now? I'll burn everything else down in this world for them. Awesome. Yeah. At, at least today. That's how I feel. At today. least today. <laughs> right? No, it's, um, I love how you said, prove yourself. Like you were proving yourself and look, Hey, look, as men, we, we, I get it. Like we all feel like, Hey, we got to provide for them. Like we got to be there. We, 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 we got to make sure they're eating. Right. But we also got to be there for them. Right. That's what, that's what you're saying. Yeah. And they don't care. Like my kid doesn't care how much money I have. Yeah, we think they, they do. care. Yeah. We think they do, but honestly, they just want dad time. That's it. That's it. He just wants, they, they, he just wants the attention. That's it. Yeah. And, and it's hard for us as men to let go of that, especially if we've been through like some of the, like, again, your dad was a Vietnam yeah. vet and, you know, we're similar in age and that's just, they felt the same way. They just didn't know how to, I don't think they knew how to find that place inside of them. Right. It's all there. Yeah. Um, man, so good. So, so good. Okay. Shifting gears a little bit. I want to know what, a typical day looks like for you? <laughs> well, today was a total shit show because yeah. <laughs> uh, a typical day uh, looks like this. Like this is what a normal day looks like. Today was a little just weird because truck broke down yesterday on my way to, I have, uh, I have my dad's truck. So when dad passed away, I got the old uh, diesel pickup truck that, you know, like heavy duty Cummings engine. Like I'm going to drive that and one day give it to my son. Yeah. We have another car, but that's like my favorite thing in the world. And it broke down yesterday. Not my favorite thing in the world. It's my favorite vehicle I've ever had. Uh, so a typical, day, you know, so we had to work through repairs and crap. So that's what today looked like. But a typical day looks like this. Wake up super early, go try to work out, get some coffee in the system, uh, spend some, I'm finding as I get older, I need to spend a lot more quiet time, me time, going for a run, exercise and whatever, then get the kids ready for school. I love, I typically either walk the kids to school or golf cart them to school and then go over to my office, which is right around the block. So I walk them to school, walk to my office, and then usually it's filled with meetings, like from eight in the morning till five o'clock. It's me either coaching someone, uh, me doing podcast interviews. I could do like two to three a day, um, coaching, advising, podcasting. That's pretty much it. Nice. Do you drive the golf cart to, to the office? <laughs> yeah, I drove it today. Our golf cart has a very unique name, uh, Billy O.T. That's the name of our golf cart. It's a pirate ship for us. Is that a thing? Do you name the gift or name the golf cart? You Is should. That, you if, should. If, if they haven't, if other people haven't, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, you <laughs> should definitely name your golf cart. <laughs> oh, man, you cracked me up. That's great. Okay, so there's a lot of similarities with successful people, right? It's like you dominate your morning, you take your time, you know, it's, you don't have like this four hour morning routine, which is ridiculous, but yeah. you do what you're, you're supposed to do. Now on the days where you have, I will, do you still have off days? Like, do you have, do you have, do you have bad days? Do you have days where you just, you know, maybe aren't feeling it? Like the one I talked about, maybe you want to quit and, and, and how do you handle that? Yeah, dude, I have off days often, right? Like just life throws that mm -hmm. to, you know, like, my mom passed away in February, right? So that, that threw an off year. My dad passed away in August of 2020. That threw me off for a few years. You know, I went bankrupt in 2020. That was an off day. 
I had to put my dog down. That was a bad day. I, you know, like I had, uh, I had a vasectomy and then I had to wind up carrying my dad up and downstairs. That was a tough day. So like, yeah, I've got, I have bad days. And then, you know, like I wake up and, you know, like I see this client's not happy or this or that. That'll throw me off, man. But uh, how do I deal with it? Like, how do I, this is how I prefer to deal with it is go, God's in control. He's my ultimate provider. Um, I know that I'm on track and I know I'm on track because when resistance is high, I know I'm heading in the right direction. So I try to look at it with optimism and go, where's the opportunity to learn and grow here? Uh, what do I need to, what do I need to release in my world? A lot of times it's like, Josh, you're a control freak. You need to get some of this shit off your plate. Right. Yeah. So like, I, I try to reflect on why am I stressed out? I wrote this in my journal just yesterday. I do not like doing a few things, right? I write, I write these things out, get it off my plate. I don't care how much it costs. It's got to get off my plate because it's sucking my energy and my time, which is energy and time are like our most valuable resources. And it's sucking them out of me because I should be selling. I should be talking with people, putting deals together. So the way I do it is I try to reflect and then I try to find people who love doing that crap and then I give them money. <laughs> oh, the, the, the thing uh, that you said about, I don't like to do this. Everyone on this planet needs to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't like to do this and get it off your plate. Right. It doesn't matter what it costs. Right. Cause that, like you said, sucking the time, sucking the energy. Um, I don't think people do that enough. The, the men that you work with, cause I know you help, I know you see you're a leader of men, you help men. Yeah. It, it, everything you just said all goes back to your purpose, right? your purpose and your identity and your, and your belief system and your, and your principles. Yeah. Is that what's lacking with the men that you, that you interact with or that you're trying to help? Most guys come to me and they go, Josh, I'm thinking about whatever and I'm struggling. Right. So they're, they're, they're looking, you know, they're looking at the current situation. They're going, I'm not happy. And I'm thinking about doing this. Hey, Josh, you've had a lot of failures in your life and you talk a lot about them. Like, what should I be paying attention to here or whatever? And mm -hmm. then when I really dig into it, it's they're not happy because they, they haven't found the joy in their work. They haven't found their, their, who they are as a dude, right? Like there's just something missing and they didn't have a guy to look at them and go, Hey, Brian, I'm proud of you. What you're doing over here though, this is stupid as hell. Stop doing this. Maybe do something like this. Have you considered that? Cause most of our skies, we won't look at another person and say, Hey man, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm thankful for you. Hey, you're really good at that. Hey, Brian, you really suck at that. Hmm. We don't get that kind of feedback and we don't get those kind of conversations. So like when I talk to dudes, like I talk to my investors and my friends and such, and I'm like, Hey man, I love you. And they're like, that's a little weird. <laughs> right. And I'm like, you're human. And I, you know, like, I love you because you're human and like, I'm supposed to. And yeah. I, and I like people. So yeah, I think the most time people, guys, they just don't know who they are. They really don't. What would you great share as uh, again? And yeah, I don't think I used to tell guys I loved them unless I, you know, had one too many, but I do, <laughs> I, I do it you, now. Open, yeah. I do it now openly be, just because yeah. it's different right now. Right. Yeah. I've gotten to that place inside of me, but um, any other one of the things I've always struggled with, and and maybe you have some insight here, is I always felt like if I was going to do anything, right, yeah. whether it didn't matter what it was, like this podcast or well, my own business or, you know, uh, drive around the block, right? It always had to be perfect. Yeah. Like I always had to do it better than anyone else, right? For sure. And I think a lot of that, I know a, a lot of that mentality prevented me from doing stuff prevented yeah. me from doing stuff. Yeah. Do you have any, do you have any comments there? I know you do. Yeah. I, I released a um, shameless plug. I, I wrote a book called the Christian dude manifesto, right? Super theologically like structured book, right? No, it's a, it's a book about like my struggles, my belief systems and such like that. It's Christian dude. You could buy it on Amazon. Um, I felt the same way. I had a dad who was a perfectionist. He liked to paint, you know, he could paint a straight line. I can't, I, I get paint everywhere and I break walls and I break things, you know, like I'm, I'm the visionary, right? So like I had a hyper perfectionist father that I can never 
paint straight. And then my mom with massive expectations. So I grew up like kind of paralyzed in, in things. And then I just found because of my belief systems, my principles and values, I saw people hurting. And if I didn't do something, then they might be hurting as bad as I was. And I've seen people commit suicide. I, you know, as a firefighter, medic and such like that. And I know that us guys, we struggle and we don't say anything. And then one day we just pop off and blow our brains out, jump off a bridge or whatever. Yeah. So like my purpose was greater than my fear. And when I released the book, like I self-published it, I, you know, I just felt like there, like I, I have a show for men called uncensored advice for men. And the guys who would like hit me back up, like they would call in and they would be like, my wife just left me or this or that, or I'm struggling with my identity. I'm struggling with my finding my purpose. I've got shit ton of money, but I'm, I'm unhappy and I'm losing my marriage. Right. So like, so I wrote this book and, and I was trying to make it perfect. And I was trying to like, I was like, I don't want to drop 15 grand on this. Cause I just know that I, I needed to write it. I, I, I didn't want to, at the time I, I, I didn't want to get a ghostwriter. I was just like, I just need to get this out of me. And then there was an urgency mm. and it was just like, you got to get this out now. And I was like, it's not ready. There's errors. It hasn't been proofread. It's, it's terrible. Like in my mind, I was like, it's terrible. It, it doesn't have a, like, like I'm rambling now. I was like, that's what the book was. And I just felt like. I got to get this out now. And when I hit publish on Amazon, it said, are you sure we found 33 grammar errors? And I go, I was biting my nail, you know, like my thumb going like this sucks publish. And I know there's errors and I, uh, guys will send me the, the, for some reason, people think that they need to do this. They'll take a screenshot of like your book or your page and they'll circle your errors. And I go, yep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm very aware. Like, thank yeah. you. Draft two might be better, but like, yeah, dude, like we want to, we want to show up and look great, but there's a dude out there who doesn't give a shit about the spelling errors. He's, he's struggling and there might be one gold nugget in that book that saves his life. What's more important, my fear of being awesome in everybody's perception and having the, you know, I've got 20,000 followers on LinkedIn or whatever. Nobody in that audience has ever like reached down and be like, Hey, Josh, you're awesome let me pay your light bill, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and I'm so like trying to make them happy, but there's that one dude who's hurting and you know, that book might help him. So I got to yeah. get over my shit. You do. You do. I mean, you are, but I'm saying in general, yeah. you do. We all need to get you. over it. Right. Yeah. Did any, did you get any feedback from that? Well, great share. I'm glad I asked that question. Did you get any feedback from anyone who read the book other than the fools who were, you know, trying to be your English teacher? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that it that it that it impacted them. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there. Where here's here's what's easy: critiquing what other people do. That's awesome. It's easy. It's fun, and you could look like a champion, and it makes you feel better about yourself. That's what bullies do. That's what I did when I, you know, I'm a I'm five foot eight. I was, you know, I wrestled in high school, so I thought I was tough. And what I did is, you know, like I can I can make other people feel less of themselves, and mm -hmm. it made me feel better about myself. So people do that, right? So I don't want to do that, right? I want to lift people up. On the flip side, yes, there's guys who will reach it, you know, reach out and they go, that one nugget, like that one thing, that's what I needed to hear today. Yeah. And, and that was worth it, man. Like 99 cent book or whatever, you know, like I'm not going to get rich on it. Like I think I made like six bucks or something, you know, like nothing great. But a lot of times like I'm, I'm working with a dude and I'm like, he needs help. And I'm like, Hey man, why don't you just check out the book? Like I'll, I'll, I'll give you a dollar, go, go read the book and then let's chat. Cause then yeah. we, we know how we fit on the same page or not. I love it. The Christian dude manifesto. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, yeah, go get it. Go get it people. I mean, it's 99 cents. We get them to $7. All right. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I have an editor right now going through the book and cleaning it up. It's not yet. We haven't produced the second volume, but you know, like I'm finding more and more my joy in helping guys. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I also do real estate and investing and business stuff on the side. But like my, my main gig is to, I say like my charter of living is to build, to build Kings, to build men. Build Kings. I love it. 
Okay. All right. So I've got a couple more questions for you, Josh. This has been tremendous. But before we get to that, I just want to let us let 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 the audience know where they can find you. Okay. Yeah. LinkedIn. Joshua Bruce Wilson. Do us do a LinkedIn. Uh, I have a few companies. PR <laughs> Ventures. Uh, so you can, you know, find me on LinkedIn. That's probably the best. That's like my CRM, my life CRM. So I yeah. connect with people and a lot of people are just trying to sell me stuff all day. I know it's an automated message that it says, hi, first name, you know, like in parentheses and then goes into it. But like LinkedIn's a good place. Uh, my cell phone is 352-274-4500. So like if you're, if you're a dude out there and you're trying to find your way or something, you text me, I could connect you with one of our coaches or something. But uh, LinkedIn is probably the best. Awesome. Okay. What you, you mentioned, you have, you, you, you still have all the pod, you don't have all the podcasts, but which are the ones that are, that are active right now? Yeah. I, I want to direct the listeners to your, to your shows. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I have um, a show called CRE principles. It's a show about commercial real estate. Nice. I have a show called the deal scout, which is, it allows me to be a little ADD and just look at all different types of deals. Mm -hmm. Right. And I bring on deal makers and we talk about all sorts of stuff from investing, venture capital, politicians. Like we've, we've interviewed all sorts of deal makers. And uh, that's a fun show for me because I could let my ADD run wild. And then I have my favorite show, which is called Uncensored Advice for Men. And that's a show where I've interviewed pastors, porn stars, kind of everyone in between, kind of going, what advice do us men need to hear? I want to hear your story, your testimony, and, you know, like, Give me some advice because we need it. That's definitely something you got to check out. The Deal Scout is how we met. I was on that show and we were, talking, were. We were doing some cold calling stuff. So that was yeah. almost a year ago. So I, I love that one. Yeah. Um, I was just talking about you this morning. We have a real estate investor and I'm like, you need to check out Brian. Like he's a cold calling master. Yeah. I remember that from our conversation a year ago. Shameless plug by <laughs> the host, Brian O'Neill. That's right. All right, Josh, you're... There's men out there listening, right? They're stuck. We talked about this a little bit offline. They're in this stuck position, right? Yeah. They, they may, they, maybe they're not on the ledge, if you will, but they're just in this spot in their life where they don't know. You know, they don't have, they haven't gotten to the tattoo moment yet. Yeah. What advice would you would you lend um, as maybe a first step or two, just to help them move in the right direction? Sure. Uh, let's apply it to, you know, you're, you're the W2 prison break free, right? Like that's, that's your, your jam. So let's apply it to that kind of thing. So you're, you're in a corporate job, you're working for the government, you're working for the family business or whatever. And you're looking at your life every day in 8 AM, eight o'clock on Monday or whatever, like you want to blow your brains out because the idea of showing up at work again, drives you mad, but you got a mortgage, you got health insurance, you got all that shit that you're worrying about. What the world needs is men that are fully alive. We don't need another pocket protecting CPA who loves, you know, like who just keeps showing up and, you know, because that's what dad did or grandpa did or whatever. What this world needs is men who are fully alive, who have found their passion, who have found their identity. Their wives want that from them. Their kids want that from them. Like we don't need another, you know, what is that the time clock cruncher? If you don't like being there, your boss doesn't want you there. <laughs> right. So figure that shit out. Like find, find the path, find the way you're not too old to start. Kentucky fried chicken guy was like in his sixties or seventies. Like there's so many stories you could start small. You could invest in real estate. You know, your group talks about it all the time. You know, you could do self-directed IRAs. You could do, you know, wholesale, you could, you know, pick up the phone on Saturdays, call people and flip homes, you know, like your, your group's expert at that kind of stuff. Like figure that out, find your way, find your path, become fully alive, man. That's what, that's what you want. And that's what the world needs from you. I just stood up on a soapbox for a second. That was fun. Man, that, <laughs> I mean, th there's nothing else to say. Seriously. That was, I wrote that down and started and the world needs men who are fully alive. So yeah. great stuff. Awesome share. I was not expecting that. Josh, you're the man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing your insight and your vulnerability. That's the most important thing because people need to hear what people need to hear what you went through and, and what you what you still go through sometimes. So I'm yeah. just super grateful. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Hey, listen, everyone, make it a great day.